Shalom, Salama, Siemi, Shalom. Greetings, uh, my Israelite brothers and sisters from around the world, whether you're of the bloodline or you're grafted in through our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. So I wanted to make this just a, a quick rant and uh, shout out to Hebrew Sphere and, and some folks that were posting on, on Hebrew Sphere in terms of um, where I wanted to go with this. So I had been thinking about this uh, for a little bit, about a day. It doesn't usually take me that long to, to think about a message, you know, because really once the, the Holy Spirit uh, put something on my mind, you know, I just kind of um, let it work. But um, there is a couple things going on. And so, you know, I'll, 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 I'll scribble something down and then I'll just kind of let it marinate for a little bit. But um, when I did a message uh, earlier, um, I looked on Hebrew sphere and, and then I saw something that really was um, valid for this uh, wishy-washy rant. And so the concept of this came about because when I've been perusing Hebrew sphere, just like a lot of, of us that have been on the, the site and on the context, we see a lot of things that we know our people need to do a little bit more research because a lot of the stuff, a lot of the doctrines and everything else it's still on out there that we've disproven multiple times. But you have to understand the lie that has been permeated within our culture has been a lie that's been permeated for 400 years. So it's going to be very hard to kind of get out of that mindset of what we've learned because here's the thing unfortunately for us we want to have a quick down and dirty you know break it down to me in five minutes give me the elevator introduction right give me the elevator interview if you can't say it in 30 seconds or less i don't want to hear about it so just a couple things, and I'm not going to rant too much about it, but, you know, when I see things of the 12 tribes of Judah, <laughs> okay, tell me who those 12 tribes of Judah are. I'd like to see that. I'm willing to pay money for it. You know, and 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 I don't want to sound... Um, you know, like a, like I'm coming across, oh, he's he thinks he's high and mighty. No, it, it's I'm coming across because, look, we have to be able to prove these things so we don't get our people in any more trouble that we've already been in. See, part of awakening is actually awakening all the way, not being partially paralyzed in sleep, not having... Um, some sort of a, a, a neurotic event <laughs> because, you know, you're kind of half awake and you're kind of half asleep. No, in order for you to actually think with, with clarity, you have to be awake. And so I think that when we do awaken, you know, we're excited. We're excited, but we don't really understand the context of the awakening process. <laughs> it's it's kind of like, well, now that you have now that you have awoken from your coma, <laughs> before you can start running, we're going to have to get you into physical therapy because your muscles now have something called atrophy. And if you think you're just going to rush up on out that bed for being in a coma for three or four months, you got a couple things coming because your muscles haven't been used. 
And, and see, I, I know that we have to be patient with, on, with one another because here's the thing. We had systemically been told to not think. We have systemically been told to not engage in analysis. Well, why are you thinking about that? Man, you don't have to go that deep. You don't need to worry about that. See, that's what we grew up in. If I'm lying, then tell me I'm lying. But no, that's what we grew up in. Because you got to understand that's what the system has done to us, to our people. Don't think that deep. Don't think that rational. You don't have to go there. You don't have to look and look and look and look and look and actually get to the source. Because you have to understand, listen, it's easy for them to just throw some stuff on out on at us. You throw things at us. And guess what? A lot of us will just take that on in without having any type of spiritual discernment. And so it's actually kind of scary where it's like, okay, you've awakened, but oh, what type of spiritual discernment do you have? See, it's easy to get into a polarized state where you're just right back in the carnality. It's like, man, you can, you're going to awaken to what? Eternal life or you're going to awaken to what? Shame. <laughs> and these are the scriptures. These are the scriptures. Look. When we awaken in the spirit, guess what? We're still operating in the spirit. And when that operation is, is, is still in the spirit, guess what? You can still see and discern things in the spiritual. Now, there's a lot of things on out there, a lot of ideologies on out there. And 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 I and I thank God for, for Teo Ministries. I thank God for We Woke Now. I thank God for Rebirth of a Nation. Because you have to understand, we're all learning in this together. And here, and, and, and me, listen, I am not an authority. I am not a, an expert. And I think with anybody that says, you know, they're, they're an expert, they're an expert on this, they, they know this, then, then you got to tell me, if you're an expert on this, you know, when you actually have to do a dissertation and you're writing to become that research expert. You know, these folks, when they be, when they have a doctorate in Egyptology, let's just say this, in Egyptology, when they have a doctorate in Egyptology, guess what? Part of that doctorate is you're not going to study about Egyptology. You're not going to research Egyptology and still be here in America looking at everything about Egypt online. It doesn't work that way. You have to actually be there in those museums. You actually have to be there at the pyramids of Giza, at the numerous pyramid sites from Luxor all the way on up the Nile, even down into Sudan. But see, we just kind of look at things like, well, you know, I, I heard from this, so I, I saw from that, you know, well, well, this is this is Esau, Esau, too. That's the that's the Arabs, it's the Arabs, this is Esau. But then you're not telling us any type of doctoral reference or any other references of. How would Edom as Arabs, how are they ruling the land? How are they ruling this earth? And just saying because of oil, mm -mm, no, no. Because see, you have to understand if you've never been there, 
the Arabs, all they do is emulate Western society. So that's a strike against them being Esau. But, you know, the thing is, man, I have had a chance to live there for quite a while. And, and during my my military career, I've, I've logged 317 days within a three year span. That's a lot of travel to places like Jordan, Qatar. UAE, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Bahrain. And then you look at that, listen, there ain't no great armies coming from out of there. Because who's Esau? Esau is a warrior. Tell me how many warriors are there in the Middle East? Because the only thing I know is... <laughs> They do a great job of contracting their mercenaries. Oh, yes, you saw they just, they just get their mercenaries. No, no, no. But you know, but those are the those are the different things. And I'm not trying to pick on on um on the, the person, but I'm just trying to give an example of where we're at with our people. See. I tell everybody, look, when I awoken, I didn't really enjoy the experience. Because I told people this, look, when I awoken, being married to a Gentile, I had to, I said, no, no, no. Wait a second, okay, there's an audible voice. All right, but okay, that may have been the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, let me check, let me take a look at these scriptures. And boy, I delved into the scriptures. I used everything that I could. Lexus, Nexus. I was going through all of it. Because my background is big data. <laughs> Records management. That's my, back then. That's my background. I was going through the National Archives. I was going through Library of Congress. I was going through everything. Oh, and yes, they do have references about that. Oh, they have references. See, there's a lot of things on out here that we have just begun to scratch the surface. A lot of us know that if it wasn't for this COVID-19, the Roman Catholic Church, Rome, the Pope, They were getting ready to open up their vaults and their archives. See, they were getting ready to actually expose the secret. Now, I'm not trying to say that that Edom is just found in the Europeans. No, we, we already know what the what the, the the prophetic the prophecy was for Edom. Edom enjoys the fat of the land. So yeah, there's gonna be Edom that controls different areas of the world and there's Edom that's gonna they're gonna do what they're gonna take on the characteristics and the traits of those people so i'm not totally going against somebody if they think if they think that Edom is saudi arabia yeah you could think you could think but but they won't ever really understand that if they go to the museum there in riyadh and you actually understand that 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 bloodline of abdul aziz actually carries a Jewish bloodline, a Ju Ju Judean bloodline. And what they did, they came through in this third iteration to what? To set everything up. But see, what they don't tell you is that this third generation third iteration that 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 came through back in the 1920s and 30s it was set up by the Brits well why would they do that 
because they know who they're dealing with. All right, I got a cousin. That Duke is over there. Well, well, how do you even line up in the uh, the the Katani? Oh well, I married the daughter here, or I, <clears throat> or I'm in this tribe there. I'm in the roles there. Why? Because I paid enough money. If you hadn't realized, that's how everything works, especially in the Middle East. That's how everything works. So what I'm trying to tell you is, look, this is great because we can start to have these discussions and we can start to see, okay, well, if this was going to be the promised land here in America, how come it says (laughs) in Revelations 18, how come it says, in Jeremiah 15, 51. How come it says in Jeremiah 9? How come it says that wherever, wherever Israel was in captivity? See, wherever Jacob was in captivity, which is which is Judah. We, we get the bloodline, we get the scepter. That's Genesis 49. We, we, we own that scepter because why? We have been made that, we have been given that. See, Ephraim wasn't given the scepter, Ephraim basically rebelled. And so when Israel rebelled, see, Israel is always stick neft. That rebellion went to Israel, those, those 10. We always maintain the scepter, so guess what? Because we had followed in their footsteps of wickedness, we scattered. See, a lot of a lot of us, we have to stop with the feel goods. Understand the information. Understand, look, if my philosophy, if my thought process isn't correct, then I need to do a little bit more studying. And that's not anybody's fault. Because here's the thing, if you're growing in this, you're learning in this. Because nobody, nobody has the answers. You think we're all gonna get these answers in captivity? Absolutely not. But if we don't go off of what the scriptures are saying, if we're not having an understanding and actually praying about understanding, then we're just gonna be blind. And here's the thing, we have to start actually understanding, look, being able to admonish each other in love saves us from what? The pit. See, we now have to start thinking, okay, We know where we're heading to. We know where we're going. But are you going to be like the rebel? Or are you going to fall in line with the saints? See, these are these are very telling words. These are very compelling words, because here's the thing we know. We know what's happening. Look, we already we already know this iteration is up. So now we have to think on other weightier matters. And before we can get to those other weightier matters, we have to be able to internalize and look within ourselves and ask the questions, okay, is this something Is this something that falls in line with what the word of God says? Is this something that falls in line with what the word of the most high has given us? And when we start to understand that, when we start to think about that, then we'll have more clarity. See, 
it literally took me about <laughs> three and a half years to even say anything. I, I, I waited. I wanted to see what it was that people were seeing. How did they react to this? How? What were they thinking about it? Because see, the the great thing is having been having being in that area, interacting with those people, that gives you a better context. That gives you a better context. Because see, when you're outside of the United States and you have an understanding, the rest of the world knows this. Don't don't think that we're just sitting here and the rest of the world is like, oh yeah, these folks are making it up. No, they know this, but for them, it's no be- it's not a benefit to tell us anything. See, I, I was when I was on out there, I was I was zealous. Back in 2017, I was I was zealous. I was like, okay, well, you know, well, this is this and this is that, you know, and and there's this and there's that, and and, and this is this is this is our land, you know. Black folks are waking on up. <laughs> I remember I said this to a, a Jordanian officer, <laughs> and he said, he said, he said, boy, boy, I, it is great talking to you. But uh, you're going to have to leave now. You're going to have to go. Because we still wanted you all to to stay asleep. (laughs) Isn't that amazing that we're the only ones that never knew this open secret? But it just gives you that perspective that the doctrines that have been placed on us has been up, down, left, right, turned inside out nonsense that we, we, us as a people have to get through. We're gonna get through it together, but we need to know how do we go about it? How do we put the framework in to to start challenging the things that are on out there and to do it in a spiritual manner. So that's all I have to say. So in conclusion, again, um, as I always do, thank you for watching this con the, the content that's provided by Covenant Awakenings. I would ask that you would like share and subscribe to this channel. And also visit us at covenantawakenings.com. I also have the information for my Patreon and Cash App. And those links are going to be provided in the description below. I also would ask, continue to sign up for Hebrewsphere.com. Hebrewsphere.com. Because we are taking these conversations and, and we're, we're, we're actually having peer review. I don't even look at this as a as a social media. I look at this more. It's almost like a it's almost academia. Because these the our our people, we become so enthralled with the information. It's awesome to see all the things that we contribute to. Because here's the thing, listen. We were never dumb people, even though that that was the label that they would try to throw on us, man, when we would come together, oh, we would literally move, literally move the, 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 the earth and the moon and the stars. We would move it <laughs> because nothing would be in our way and nothing would get in our way. If we wanted to truly get to something, we can do it. So I believe that this is the beginning of us getting to getting to our greatness. But to get to our greatness, you got to remember, we still have to get refined in this fire. You know, so when we're getting out of this thing. Now we're going to be coming on out. Now it's getting refined going through this 
and increasing our knowledge. Like, like Daniel said, when we're able to go here and there, when we're able to go to these different parts of the world, when we're able to see and put our eyes on and touch and feel these things, it's a different grasp, it's a different feeling, it's a different level of understanding. So with that, thank you for listening to my video of wishy-washy doctrine. I hope I wasn't too wishy-washy in my presentation. So again, shalom, CME, salama, peace and blessings, Israel.